I'm really uh, honored to have with me today, Father Teji Thomas, who's director of Sneha Gram, which is a home away from home for children and young adults living with HIV. And uh, Father is a professional nurse and he has been working in the field of public health, especially HIV care and control since more than 14 years. Uh, welcome Father. Yes. And uh, we really, uh, I'm really waiting to learn a lot from your experiences on the field. We have failed to eliminate parent to child transmission despite having all the scientific tools to do so. Other countries in our region have uh, actually succeeded in doing so. So what are the barriers in preventing mother to child transmission so that children do not suffer for no fault of theirs? And what needs to be done better? Uh, Ma'am, what in my experience, what I have felt, I was in a southern part of India, namely a closer to Kerala uh, in the last seven and a half years. And there in my, where I was working in my district, only three cases were found, uh, mother to child transmission in the uh, two years ago. And they said it was also not from particularly from this district, but some of those people who travel, maybe those who were, uh, those who have come for road works, they're poor people. So as they come, maybe they are all not staying together. Sometimes after work, the men might might have found another some lady, and they have you know in some way, and they they have uh, she is pregnant, and she started with ART medicine, and after two or three months after the work, when they return back to their original village, they do not continue the medicine, and the mother to child transmission which couldn't which could be controlled they are not in a position that uh, to control this so that has happened so this is one case which i know so one of the district authority was sharing with me the, like this cases and we are not able to have the adherence of art medication in certain people and so they are not able to uh, the mother to child transmission uh, cannot be controlled 100 percent in poor developed places <clears throat> okay uh, you have been working in this field for so long and uh, particularly with children and adolescents and uh, what are the challenges yes. which you have faced what are the barriers you find uh, in handling issues there are so many issues uh, uh, around children, of course, with anyone, but particularly with children and uh, adolescents and young adults, issues around disclosure, confidentiality, yes. mainstreaming of children with others, children living with HIV, stigma in schools and workplaces. So could you share some of these from your personal experience? Yeah. Uh, I I was working in the institution and uh, I in the in, within the institution we I do not come across with a lot of stigma issue, but now I am working with adolescent and youth and here we have placed some of our youth for a job outside. So when they get a job in a city like Bangalore, they have to stay in a PG. And in a PG, when they come, some of their uh, friends, they come to know this person who is staying beside me is with an HIV infection. They do not want to be in the same room with her or him. So that is, a, you know, so that is a, for a, a very good example that st stigma is still there. So that is one challenge. Livelihood becomes a challenge. No, so there are even last week I have come across with one issue. One girl is sent out of the PG, and uh, in some cases, PG people those who run the PG, they are also maybe connected, and they can also share or send a message with that particular person is infected with HIV and things like that. So we are not able to go to the near PG to in order to place there. That is one thing. And when I'm in the institution, what I come across is 
they i had also some children who does not have anybody of their own family origin or relatives so those people those children did not have uh, anybody or for example on their birthday or uh, when it is a school holiday they do not have any place to go and because of the cwc you know child welfare, child welfare committee and jj act or that the rules which is very strong and uh, acting we are not able to take this small children even to some of our own friends or or, or to my own home so these children have got a kind of you know a special lot a emotional break up and the order to handle them it is really a great challenge i have faced because when they are below 18 i am not in a position to take in where without the permission of some of this government authorities and always it is not very easy and it is also a big risk for me to send this boy or, or girl to some uh, some of my friends house or my even to my house because if there is anything happen all responsibility is on me so that is a great challenge that i have come across so such children they have uh, uh, this their cognizant development you uh, know intellectual capacity emotional uh, i eq and iq all that is actually we have seen also through a study that it is really very low in very especially in these children because what i feel is that from my experience the low gap of parents or uh, uncle or aunt or grandparents or their sibling is very much seen in those children and uh, i being a father a male i cannot be a mother and uh, i cannot be also a father in his full sense when i have a handful of children with me so and these are the things that i have come across and i don't know so uh, what about uh, their families like somebody in the family of those children uh, there is they just don't want to integrate or they want they don't want to meet them like maybe the parents are not there but how do the if, other family members even if the child is not staying with them but uh, there is is there that much of a stigma still yeah that they cannot this, go this to i shared parents. with a handful of children who were sorry Uh, this i shared with a handful of children who were with me like some of these children were found uh, on the road side under the bridges near the waste ba- waste baggages so uh, like mother teresa sisters have picked these children and uh, handed over to us so we are not able to find anybody uh, for these children so i had some six seven children like of uh, this thing uh, what about yes. the others what about the others who are uh, staying in the uh, in snay southern or uh, because you have uh, uh, i think uh, they are staying full time there right? yes. yes 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 yeah other children it was a little more easy to handle because when it is a time of holiday they have a hope that okay they can go back to their home there is a grandmother or there is an uncle even if it is not even if even if they are not very acceptable to in their family you know they are really very much looking for that time to go and they are you know they are freed from a kind of hostel type of life and they are free to go so that they look for maybe when they are come back maybe they share with us okay i was considered like a second child at home i was given a separate place sometime how to play with uh, my aunties children and uh, sometimes you know so these are the things that they share but still they are okay and so we are able to guide them that's what and what yeah. about disclosure issues i think that's again uh... Uh, a very thorny issue when uh, is the child told and uh, how do they take in that disclosure about uh, 
like yes. for example in the yeah, when i was living with those children who, who when all are infected with hiv uh, when they are 12 years 11 12 years i used to gather them with the help of a msc psych, uh, psychology nurse and we used to tell them okay do you know why you are taking every day one medicine and uh, uh, we used to tell them ask them why why you should be taking it okay then they they had a lot of questions and we used to disclose you know you have a uh, one uh, one small sickness like this but you can have a normal life so we used to tell them so a lot of doubts they had and they used to every six month or every one year just to give them some input session so slowly with the help of other uh, peer uh, mentors and uh, no elderly boys or girls they uh, they were understanding it and they were accepting this reality but when i come back again to the adolescent youth i whenever i send boys or girls from here now to the pg or workplaces outside i tell them please don't tell your status or identity to anybody don't carry even a t-shirt where it is uh, no come from where it is written sneha gram or sneha sadan uh, things like that and don't keep your uh, art medicine bottle as it is you remove maybe the outside uh, uh, label and keep it in a very safe place and things like that. because the friend who comes to know today tomorrow need not be your friend so that is a very sad thing what to do because uh, there are maybe some 50 people staying in the pg but only some seven of our children whom we have put together and uh, so there is a major risk even they can lose job they can lose the pg where they stay all of this can be in it and and also in the school uh, in the educational field also it must be there is it like those who are studying those who are studying in colleges yes it it, it is to an extent it is there at present where i am in snehagram the education is done here inside the campus itself we are under an national open schooling it is a kind of distance study they need not to go to a public school we take care of the schooling education all that but in mangalore where we have children we they are going to the regular school and there this issue was again sometimes present uh, once a standard girl was told there when there was a small news on world aids day celebration a group had come to our institution and there was a news report in the news page before i read the news uh, these children read and one girl told me father today i don't know what will happen in the school this news has come so one of her friends came to her and said i know what this is you are suffering from so that you know collapsed to her day and she was telling she just came back to me crying telling that uh, some of my friends came to know that uh, we are all having a hiv infection things like that so but still the school was run by a group of catholic nuns and they were really very supportive and they told us okay they, you know they like you know sometimes some of these children we called and teachers we called and we told only their parents were hiv infected and these children are free from it all that and uh, to some of those people we said and to some of the other teachers who could more understand better we told they are also infected but there is no problem we are living with them we are playing we are eating with them there is no issue so it is so okay to have these children also with us and studying with the other children so in such a way we have uh, solved this of these issues and later they have come to know it is okay to be with them and uh, some of those people started coming to our places and to share meal with them and all that so uh, i think because this year's theme of the uh, of aids 2022 or the or the 24th international aids conference is re-engage and follow the science yes. and from what you have been sharing i think 
uh, I would like you to elaborate a little bit upon the importance of this theme, re-engaging and following the science. Because all these problems, a lot of them are stemming from that we do, people do not follow the science and we do not really know. And there are so many myths and uh, discrimination still prevailing around HIV. So why do you think this uh, yes. theme is important? Yes. Why do, sorry? Why do you think this theme is so important? Re-engage and follow the science. With whom should we be re-engaging? And yes. why, why is the theme important? Yeah, it, it's important that we share this awareness, what we know to the general public, even to the learned people of also of our, uh, you know, even the learned people sometimes they think that, okay, like a professionally qualified persons also come back, to, is it okay? Are you a safe father? to stay with them like for example sometimes we here eat the food that is cooked by adolescent our youth because we give them also cooking practice so some of them again keep on asking is it okay that you could eat this food so we tell them we are all living since so many years every sunday our children cook the food for us uh, and our children like some of our boys are good in milking the cows so we are drinking that milk and all that, you know. So we teach those people who come here and they're okay to send their children even and they're okay to come and do some kind of volunteering and come and... But there are also a group of people who are looking from far at these things, realities. And they are always with this stigma and fear. So uh, to, uh, to such a group of people, I don't know what can bring the change in them. So, so you think this, this should also be part of the school education for the general students. They, uh, they should be made aware and they should also be told about, uh, about uh, these different illnesses and what, what is there and, uh, and just to break the myths and uh, the misinformation which is there. Uh, or lack of information which is there in the general public. Do you think the children in school, they should also be made aware of this? Yeah, I, I would say that they would, it would be good that they should get some kind of exposures. Okay, they, these children with a kind of infection also, a normal human being who can be also living with us, who can be also a professionally qualified person tomorrow to, to have a job with you or uh, who can be also living beside your uh, house uh, in the future, but there is no problem. So some kind of uh, kind of uh, acceptance and awareness should be reaching to everybody. Yes, yes. So, so, thank uh, you very I, much. Yes, thank you very much, Father. And I just wanted to share with you, like I have also studied in a Roman Catholic school and I have taught I was taught by nuns and uh, I have taught in that school, studied in a school called Loreto Convent. It is run by an Irish group of nuns. Yes. And we faced the problem. Oh, we yeah. used to take our children on Children's Day to a, lep a leprosy home uh, situated in my near my okay. city. And uh, of course, they were all non-infective and we used to spend that day with them. And at some later stage, the parents started objecting to this, that we don't want our daughter to go there. So that is the level of misinformation which is there in the public and uh, regarding so many yes. other illnesses yes. also. And I think uh, that needs to be removed. That is important. Yes, yes. And, you know, I always appreciated those schools and authorities bringing you to us and the right or let them see the reality let them know what is the world and what, you know, uh, sometimes I thought my children with me are becoming subjects for others to learn. But still I thought, let them share that. And uh, this blessing going going to come back to my children's life. That's what I believe. You know, like sometimes there were parents who were bringing their children when they come back from far places like Kuwait or Australia, and they were sharing with us, with me, Father, whenever I buy, like Sunday we go for shopping, 
one day my child is not happy because the child friend has got some other things and they are not happy so i am bringing my children to you to your place because let them see the reality what these children they do not have many things that they are enjoying so in the same way yeah. thank, thank you very much thank you very much father yes. thank you so much shabama thank you, thank you. so 